Oh, so you finally got around to watching this video, eh? Well, let me ask you this. Are you a procrastinator? If that's the case, well, this is not good news because well, procrastinating on your sales activities can be really, really, really painful. And I know, and I've experienced this before, I look back at my sales career and I procrastinated on calling back an annoyed customer once, only to have that customer then call my boss mad, angry, pissed right off, and then my sales manager came to me to complain. Even worse, this happened during a national sales meeting, so I didn't have to just deal with my boss, my sales manager, shouting at me. I had my national sales manager stood there getting involved as well. And all of that hassle, all of that stress because of a little procrastination on my part and not calling that customer back and resolving whatever the issue was originally with them. And I'm not in the minority with my procrastination either. 20% of everyone on this planet procrastinates on something important every single day. So, with all that said, how did I break through my consistent procrastination at my sales job? Well, I tried all of the obvious ways to avoid procrastination and I found nothing really worked. But that was until I learned about the real science behind why we procrastinate and why it's not your fault. And scientists have a real clever system to prevent it as well. So in this video, I'm going to share the science behind why we procrastinate and how you can eliminate procrastination forever. Hi, my name is Will Barron and I'm the founder of Salesman.org, where we help thousands of sales professionals who sell services crush their sales quotas. Now, the crazy truth about procrastination is that your brain is hardwired to do it. That's right, there's nothing wrong with you if you procrastinate. You're not useless, you're not unproductive, it's just not your fault. Your brain was actually designed from the ground up to procrastinate. Now, the science explains procrastination as a, as a fight between two parts of the brain. So if we draw our brain right there, there's two parts of it. And we know this because when we study the brain, these two parts of it are light up when the individual who's being studied is asked to complete a task that they don't really want to do. Now, these two parts of the brain are on the left hand side, we have the limbic system. And then on the right hand side, we have what we call the pre frontal, the prefrontal cortex. Now the limbic system, this is the ancient part of the brain. It is reactive, it is unconscious, and it does a lot of things that are really important for us. Now the prefrontal cortex, this is the more recently evolved part of the brain that helps plan your, plan your future. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail because the limbic system is designed to keep you pain-free right now, here in the moment. It doesn't realize that, well, if you avoid doing something right now in the moment, you're probably gonna have to face more pain in the not too distant future. It also doesn't understand the consequences of not doing important things right away. On the other hand, with our prefrontal cortex. This does understand the issues that come with procrastination. It can see into the future and it understands that suffering a little bit of pain right now, doing the task, might be worth it to avoid huge amounts of pain later on. So when you sit there at your office and you get an email and you've got a task that you don't want to do, these two parts of the brain start firing up and competing with each other. If the limbic system wins, then you procrastinate. If the prefrontal cortex wins, then you get on with the task, you don't procrastinate, and your life is probably a lot better for it. So you can stop blaming yourself if you are a procrastinator, just like what I used to be. You can start blaming your limbic system instead. So now you might be asking, why does the limbic system so often beat the prefrontal cortex and cause you and I and everyone else to procrastinate? Well, the reason that many people procrastinate is because, well, the limbic system is a much older it's a much older system than the prefrontal cortex. The limbic brain is an automatic system. It's the part of your brain that when you touch something hot, it forces your hand to fly away from it automatically. It's evolved to perform basic survival instincts like dodging attacks from people wearing loincloths trying to kill you by smacking you over the head with a big club. So the limbic system is always on. 
it's always on, it's always ready to go, and it's always active. Now, the problem is in the battle between these two parts of the brain as they're firing off and deciding whether you're gonna procrastinate or take action on the task, is that the prefrontal cortex is not automatic like the limbic brain. It has a on, off switch, and you need to push the on button to make it work. So if we know that the limbic system is gonna cause us to procrastinate, and we know that the prefrontal cortex is gonna encourage us to get the job done now, but the limbic system is always on, and we need to flip the switch on the prefrontal cortex to turn it on, then how do we go about prioritizing the prefrontal cortex and hitting this big on button? Well, there are actually three steps to achieving this. So through millions and millions of years of evolution, our brains have been wired in the following way to become more motivated to do the tasks that enable us to survive. It's a three-step process. One, two, three. First off, there's gonna be a trigger. Next, we're gonna exhibit a behavior, and then we're gonna develop some kind of reward system. So let me give an example. Trigger, we see, we see food. Behavior, you eat the food, and then the reward usually is you get a dopamine spike of when you've had that donut, that cake, that pizza, whatever it is, full of calories, your brain goes, well done, that's enough calories for the next four days, you fat bugger. Now, importantly, this three-step system is also used when you procrastinate. It may go like this. You might have a trigger in that you get an annoyed email from a customer that you probably should reply to. Now, if you're procrastinating, your behavior is to ignore the email and put it off for a later date without thinking about the consequences of doing so. And then the reward, it seems like there shouldn't be a reward, but the reward is that you don't have to apologize to that customer and maybe the customer solves the problem for themselves and you never have to engage with them at all. So this is all automatic. This system here is automatic. And instead of falling back on this automatic default behavior, if you are a procrastinator, you need to do something different. You need to engage your prefrontal cortex. You need to hit that. If you've got an on off switch, you need to hit that on switch to make it start working. So step one, when you feel like you're just about to start procrastinating, you've got to stop. Take a second to think about the consequences of not taking action on this task that's been put in front of you. You need to ask yourself, and so you're asking your prefrontal cortex, whether the pain of doing this task right here, right now, is gonna be less than the future pain of the task spiraling out of control and becoming more and more of an issue to solve. The next step in dealing with procrastination after you've engaged your prefrontal cortex, after you've hit this on button right here, is to identify the smallest amount of progress that you could make on this particular task. So to eliminate procrastination and kick your limbic system to the curb, you don't need to complete the entire task. This could be an email reply, or it could be building a whole training product, which is what we're doing over at salesman.org. You don't need to complete the whole thing. All you gotta do to avoid procrastination is find the smallest bit of the task that you can complete within the next five, 10, 15 minutes. So personally, if I find myself procrastinating, I'll ponder on the pain that this procrastination is gonna cause me in the future, and then I'll set a 15 minute timer, and I'll just start cracking on with it. Even if I don't know where to start, where to go, I don't know what I'm doing, I'll set a 15 minute timer, and I'll have a go, I'll have an attempt at solving the problem. It's really that simple. Now, the final step after you've engaged your prefrontal cortex by thinking about the consequences of not doing the task, and then you've started work on the task by doing the smallest possible chunk of work towards it. Well, the final step after all that is to reward yourself. And personally, this is something that I've actually struggled with my whole working career. And I've covered it numerous times on the Salesman Podcast. You can find the Salesman Podcast on iTunes, Google Play. I'll leave some links in the description of this video below if you want to check it out. But giving yourself a quick reward for starting work rather than procrastinating on it doesn't have to be complicated. So when I'm trying to avoid procrastinating on a task, I'll set a timer for 15 minutes. I'll get cracking. It doesn't matter if I actually make any progress or not. And when those 15 minutes are up, I'll set a five minute timer to go and grab a nice cup of English tea. Rewarding yourself is really important because this completes the trigger behavior reward pathway. Trigger behavior reward. And this starts to wire the process. And if you do this often enough, you're gonna rewire your brain to take action as its default state, rather than probably what your default state is right now, which is to procrastinate. And this three-step system of the trigger, 
realizing that you're just about to procrastinate and then visualizing what it's going to cost you in the future if you do procrastinate. Then number two, behavior. So doing the smallest chunk of work that you can possibly do on the task and just getting started. And finally, step number three, reward. So taking a five minute break or having a cup of tea after doing a little bit of work. This is how I've gone from being a chronic procrastinator. Someone who always did, you know, pretty good in school, but never lived up to expectations. That was the parents evening and report cards that was written down from every teacher from every grade I ever went through. It's how I've gone from that to being pretty freaking productive today. So hopefully you can implement this system into your own life and eliminate your own procrastination as well. So there we go. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and why not click one of the videos that are on the screen right now to continue your own sales education.